enjoy writing a variety of uh, things and I and have. I wrote res restoration um, historicals and I wrote um, uh, contemporary single title, it's hard because it's like six things, single title paranormal contemporary romantic suspense novels. It's like, a, which one do I put first? Uh, but And I wrote those before I became Sabrina Jeffries. It, it took on the Sabrina Jeffries pseudonym and uh, and wrote strictly Regency historicals, but I enjoy writing all of them. I mean, they're all things that have interested me, areas that I like delving into. The thing I love about historical romance, uh, Regency historicals, a lot of people say, oh, I'm so tired, the Regency's been overdone. The Regency is a very rich period. There is all of this conflict because you're coming out of the Georgian period, and I heard uh, Elizabeth Hoyt mention today that it was like the, the 60s, and is it's like that growing up in the 50s and then the kids of the 60s rebel. Well, it, that's the Georgian period. It's kind of like that growing up in the Georgian period, and then um, and then living in the in the 60s. And actually, I think that somebody else who said that. But anyway. <laughs> Um, I, I loved that comparison because it really is true. You've got that clash of the of the grown, you know, of the establishment versus the kids coming up. There was a little enough of the wildness of the Georgians still there, but you're starting to move into the Victorian age, so you have that clash of mores and people saying, you know, we don't like people sleeping around all the time, and so you've got the, the high sticklers in society who don't think you should do these things, and then you've got the people who, who are still leftovers from that Georgian period still doing things. And then you have the industrial age coming in, so there were a lot of um, little revolutions and massacres. There was the Peterloo Massacre in 1819, where you know uh, it, there was a lot of reaction to the French Revolution in England. So people were always terrified that any day now, you know, the the, the French influence is going to make the the masses rise up and overflow, overthrow their you know uh, their lordly masters, you know. And so there was that worthy, so you have that tension between the classes, and then you have the, the growing middle class and, and London life. There is, it's such a rich period that to me, you could write in the Regency for 100 years and you would never mine all of that. I mean, there's the criminal underbelly in London that was going on. There was a, the, the police force in, in, in England, in London, was established in 1829 but it was established as a result of things that had happened before it, and it actually that's going to be in my next book. Some of that is in there. Um, it's all fascinating to me. Every time I go off on this new little tangent, I go, oh, that's just fascinating. I want to explore that little piece, you know. Um, the, the book How to Woo a Reluctant Lady is, I, I deal a little bit with the court systems were changing at this point. And it was for the first time defense lawyers were becoming an important part. Up until then, you you defended yourself. You went in, and it was not guilty, uh, innocent till proven guilty. You were guilty till proven innocent, and you defended yourself. And they came in, and they and they you know did the testimony against you, and then you defended yourself. And then people started hiring people to defend them. And so uh, the hero of that book is a defense attorney. And so that was interesting to me because it's the first time you see that happening. And um, that was just an, a little side road I decided would be fun to look at in the book. So I could mine the Regency period forever. <laughs> I never get tired of it. In How to Woo a Reluctant Lady, I have a little mini trial that takes place in a chapter. And because their trials actually were very short, they only took place. In, actually, I make mine last almost a whole day. and. And in, then it would have been like an hour. <laughs> they were like, "Tell your story, get out." Well, but it was a it was a murder, so so in a more complicated thing. But they had for they knew some things forensically. I had a thousand page book from Google Books about the forensics of crime that I used, and I and it was right from my period, and I could look at it and say, "Did they know this about drowning?" Did they know this about you know? Uh, could they tell whether someone had actually been strangled or hung? Uh, hanged. Sorry, excuse me. And I, that was that was just fascinating to me. How much they already knew then. I mean, they were doing the dissections and all that. That's another whole. The medical end was another. Uh, yeah, one day I might have to do a doctor. But 
I'm not sure. I, I don't know if I have yet realized, hey, I've made it. Um, I, I, people tell me that I've made it and, and part of me goes, yes, I have. <laughs> but but I, I had two failed careers before, you have to understand. The other two previous pseudonyms, you know, uh, did, not, did not take, as I put it, and Sabrina Jeffries did take. And so I always have that in the back of my mind, you know, at any time it could be snatched away from you. So it's like people from the depression, you must always eat because in, in any moment it will be all snatched away. So I still have this depression mentality occasionally, but um, I think I kind of knew it. I was telling my sister this morning, I, I knew it the first time the head of my publishing house, uh, you know, wanted to have dinner with me and I was like, okay, that doesn't happen to everybody. I, I know that because I've been to many, many publishers and I've done many things that I had not been aware of that. So those things kind of tell you, oh, you know, maybe I am an asset and I'm not fighting for my place in the publisher anymore. I'm actually an asset, which you want to be. You can only keep being published if you're an asset to the publishing house. And so that, I think that was when I first realized. And maybe also the first time somebody had heard of me who was not, you know, my family member or somebody at a conference, you know, where I was, I think I was getting a cab and he said, oh, you're here with the writer's conference. I said, yeah. And I said, my name. And he said, I, I know that name. And I said, really? Seriously? I didn't believe him. He's like, oh yeah, I've seen your book. I said, seriously? 